Okay, in this lesson today, we're going to be talking about the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution uh, started in 1790 and lasted until around 1837. Now, there are a couple of terms I want you to be familiar with with this lesson, and I've written them in red for you. Number one, textile. Textile is cloth or fabric. Cloth or fabric. Demand is the amount of something people want to buy at a given price. Supply is the amount of something people want to buy at a given price. Now, these are some phrases that you'll need to be familiar with in this lesson. Okay, mass production. Mass production means making many products at once. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes when we talk about uh, Eli Whitney. Mass production. Productivity. This is the amount of goods and services provided by workers in a certain amount of time. Productivity. The amount of goods and services produced by workers in a certain amount of time. The Industrial Revolution begins. Well, first of all, we need to know what was life like in the early 1700s in America. Well, for most people, if they needed items, they had to make it by hand. I have written for you here in the 1700s, cloth, tools, and furniture were all made by hand. Uh, you couldn't go to the uh, local store and buy these things. It, you had to make them whatever you wanted. You had to have them made by hand. In the 1800s, however, things began to change. And it says machines were used to make goods. We're going to talk a little bit more about these new machines and who invented them and what they're used for. So again, 1700s, cloth, tools, furniture, whatever you needed, you had to make it by hand. In the 1800s, things began to change, and we're making these items now using machines. Okay, let's begin. In 1790, Samuel Slater opens up the first cotton spinning mill in the United States. Now, cotton spinning and uh, textile mills have been very popular in England, and some people mm, seem to think that Slater may have stolen the design for creating a cotton spinning mill, and then he brought it to the United States. I'll let you decide. But anyhow, in 1790, Samuel Slater opened the first cotton spinning mill in the United States. More mills began to open along rivers in the eastern United States. If you look at a map of the United States, you notice that in the east we have lots of rivers. And so we see that Slater starts making lots of money by creating these spinning mills near the rivers. And so more and more people are going to do the same thing. They think, well, this is an easy way to make money. And so they find a river and build a factory there. More mills equals more demand for cotton. That means the more factories we have making products from cotton, the more people want cotton. Okay? Eli Whitney in 1793 invents a machine called the cotton gin. Now I've drawn kind of a rough drawing here. Uh, he thought that by, well, I'm going to back up just a second. If we have more demand for cotton, that means we need more places to grow cotton. And so in the South, we start to see that uh, farmers are going to now switch over and start raising more cotton fields. Well, the bigger your fields are, the more people you need to help you pick the cotton. Therefore, this is where slavery is going to come into issue. Eli Whitney in 1793 he didn't really like the idea of slavery. He, he had traveled to the South and uh, saw a friend of his uh, had a farm or a plantation. And he noticed that the slaves were having to pick all the cotton seeds from the cotton by hand. And uh, his friend said, you know, I wish I had something that would uh, pick this cotton seed quicker. Well, Eli Whitney goes back home and he invents this machine called the cotton gin where the slaves insert uh, the cotton in there and turn the crank and it'll clean the seeds off of it. Uh, these teeth will clean the seeds out of the cotton and will push the cotton out. Whitney thought, well, if I invent this machine, uh, maybe slavery will come to an end. But, uh, as you can see, I have written here that there's more of a demand for cotton now. So th this machine, yes, it does help, but it's, gonna, it's not going to do what Whitney thought it would do. We'll, we'll get to that in the next lesson or so. Now, Eli Whitney's cotton gin increased uh, the supply for cotton. Supply is a term that I referred to earlier for you. 
this machine allows the slaves to clean the cotton quickly or faster and so now because they can clean the cotton faster we can go pick more cotton so this this machine although it does a wonderful job it also increase the supply for cotton. Not really what Whitney wanted, but it does help. Francis uh, Cabot Lowell in 1814 creates a mill that has both a cotton spinning machine and a power loom to weave cotton. Now, this is a, a factory that will spin the cotton into cloth and then will uh, weave it into cloth. And so we start to see there's great success with this. Actually, uh, these, this factory that Lowell creates, this uh, cotton mill factory, produces 30 miles of cloth in a day. And this is, this is phenomenal considering the technology that they had at that time. Uh, so this new idea of a cotton mill or these mills that spins cotton and also uh, will weave it starts producing 30 miles of cloth per day. Right? So you can kind of see where we're headed to with this. Now, machines begin to change lives. Now, not just lives of those people uh, that own the factories, they're gonna get richer, but it's also gonna have a bigger impact for those folks, that, uh, the average citizen. We start to see young girls and women, they go to work in factories, and their schedule was often from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, they also had time uh, uh, during this time where they could take classes and learn things uh, about uh, uh, the world around them and receive the education that they needed. We also have Cyrus McCormick. In 1831, McCormick invents a reaper that is pulled by horses. Now, we don't really think that's big of, that big of a deal, but in those days it was because this reduced the time it took to cut and harvest wheat. So now farmers could plow their fields or harvest their wheat fields faster. John Deere invented the steel plow. Uh, this allowed farmers to cut through all this dirt a lot faster and uh, make larger fields. Robert Fulton, he's also important. In 1807, he invented the steamship, and we're going to talk about that. This is going to allow uh, factories to take large supplies and items that they produce and put them on these ships, and they can go up and down the river and uh, take them to cities that need or that will buy their products. All right. The last slide I have for you, first railroads in Tennessee came in 1840, and it ran from Nashville to Chattanooga. Uh, the railroads helped all three regions of Tennessee to grow. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about how these regions grow. In summary, the Industrial Revolution came to the U.S. in the 1700s, and new inventions increased productivity and changed lives. Thank you very much.